Welcome aboard the U-48. It's the 20th of February 1941, shortly after 1am we're about to receive our orders from the BDU for yet another patrol. Orders today from the BDU is apparently a difficult patrol off the coast of Portugal, right alongside the Strait of Gibraltar. We're to patrol in this sector 2,500 kilometers. We may, we may receive additional orders once we are there. Um, and our orders while there are to sink in excess of 10,000 tons of Allied shipping. As our U boat sets sail from the port of La Rochelle, this time we've ordered them to turn the light on after the very near miss from the deck gates last time. Turn your light on. Not yet at the stage of air raids. I'll bring you back when we're a little bit further out to sea. Sea actually quite rough, even within the harbour. Interesting. With the sea unusually choppy, this is going to be an unpleasant ride. And with us safely outside of the harbour, the order to shut the light off will be given momentarily. Interesting tidbits for February 1941. The U-boat fleet was able to sink 100 enemy vessels, totaling 401,768 tons, as we said, for zero losses. This was a revised uh, scoreboard af done after the war and was actually far worse than what Churchill's wall chart originally stated. Um, he thought that February 41 was the only month where the U-boat were not to lose any submarines. In actual fact, on the revised scoreboard uh, used from documents captured after the war, U-boat actually enjoyed several months up until then without any losses at all. Um, perhaps most famously, December 1940, January 41 and February 41, those three months combined without any losses at all. And during that time, they managed to sink over a million tons of Allied shipping. And so happy times indeed for the U-boat commanders and hence that's how it was known. Welcome to the following morning. We're still in the Bay of Biscay and we haven't made that much progress during the night thanks in large part to a very rough and choppy sea. However, the seas swell not quite as bad as it was. Hopefully the propeller isn't going to stick out in the air anything like as much as it was throughout the night. Everybody's feeling a bit rough. Hoping to make some good progress throughout the day today. 24 hours after departure, the sea is now much calmer and our U-boat has managed to make good progress now almost 600 kilometers away from La Rochelle, well on the way to our patrol sector. Discipline aboard the boat is good. Everybody's happy that the seas are much calmer. And the following morning, it's a stormy condition again. We've got some quite large swell and we've just issued the order for our first dive down. Have a listen. See if we can hear anything on hydrophone. Certainly not going to see anything up here. We'll give our... Uh, Schuster, our hydrophone guy there, an assistant. We'll see if he can see anything or hear anything, certainly. Give you a little idea then of our position. It's uh, currently 20 past 8 in the morning, 21st of February 41. Uh, we've covered more or less the entire Bay of Biscay and uh, we're now swinging around on the edge of the Atlantic uh, with around seven or so hundred kilometers to go. Um, due to our little kink in the course, it's going to be a little nearer 8. Either way, uh, we'll be uh, inside off the coast of Portugal before we know it.
Despite our second dive down, our hydrophone guy heard nothing. However, we've just received a communication from the U1020, uh, who is approximately 180 or so kilometers behind. Let's see what he has to say. Convoy in sight, Naval Square, Bravo Fox 742, course 214, 13KMH. Okay, convoy in sight, fantastic. Of course, uh, radio guy there with a the blast of the national anthem. And so, with that said, uh, let's see uh, exactly what he says. So, we'll see if we can plot a course. Bravo Fox 742, course 214. Well, there's Bravo Fox 742 right where he is. And if the course is 214, uh, that is going to be roughly in this direction. And if they're going 13 kilometers an hour, I feel uh, we'll be able to swing around and potentially pick this guy up. Now, he could be, uh, this convoy could be about to go through our patrol sector, but you know what? I don't want to hang around and wait for it. Swing her around, and we'll see if we can pick the convoy up. With the first bit of action, this patrol, our crew are getting excited. They're proceeding towards the guesstimated intercept point at flank speed. Music blaring. Many officers topside keeping a sharp lookout. I'll bring you back with an update. We've just ordered the boat down to periscope depth. We haven't yet slowed down, and that's because we're seeing if we can pick this uh, convoy up on the hydrophone. As it happens, the answer is not yet, so we're going to slow down to a uh, full stop to allow the hydrophone operator Schuster the maximum possible range with the minimum amount of interference. The große Gruppe von Schiffen festgestellt. Vermutlich ein Geleitzug. Well, it seems to have paid off. We asked for an all stop. We asked to dive down to 50 meters and Schuster just reports audio contact with a large group of ships. He presumes is a convoy. And if we take a look here on the map view, what do you know? Uh, 7 to 16. We already know this guy is trending uh, 217 or thereabouts thanks to the uh, thanks to the sub that's following it and we already know that they're doing a speed of 13 kilometers an hour which is going to be very helpful indeed because that's going to enable uh, us uh, to save a little bit of time in trying to guesstimate what speed they're doing. I'll bring you back when we're a little closer. It would appear that at this moment in time, uh, the convoy is roughly 124 kilometers or so away from our present position. We'll continue to close the gap. Uh, it looks like this is going to be an early morning raid. Just two or three hours later, and we're fast closing in on the convoy. And as Captain, we've said, well, it's still dark. It's not the greatest of weather. We need to get into position early, raise the snorkel. And so snorkel, order to raise it goes out. And hopefully today, will it work? As we've seen, sometimes the order falls by the wayside, but no, not today. The snorkel does indeed go up. So no idea what the issue was um, the first time we tried to raise the snorkel topside. Either way, she's working today topside, and that's going to enable us to dive down to periscope depth without the diesels cutting out. That said, the sea is a little choppy. If we do get water down the pipe, the diesels will cut out, and if that's the case, we'll have to switch to the electrics early. But for now, it's a periscope depth. Hopefully we can pick these guys up uh, a second time without reducing power. It should be much closer. And then we'll get a much more accurate picture on where they are. And based on that, we'll start and position ourselves ready to strike. Well, just two minutes later, we're down there and he's identified them. Uh, here they are. And still 16 kilometers of uncertainty, but certainly trending in our direction. And you can see there 
Uh, we're, we're not very far away. In fact, if we look there, maybe 30, 35 kilometers, something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, let's draw a new trend line then, something like this. We'll delete the existing one. And our plan will be uh, to intercept these guys uh, from either side. Um, that's probably a little ambitious in terms of distance. Um, let's draw that again. Uh, maybe somewhere around here. Um, something like that. And again, from the side. We'll try and, if it's a large enough convoy, see if we can surface up right in the middle of it. Um, I'll see you then. A short while later, we're going to take a peek through the periscope, see what we can see. And what do you know? A definite sign of an enemy convoy. Zooming in then. One, two, three. Direction four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen smokestacks. This is going to be worth going for. Time to fold your little snorkel away. The game is on. We've switched over to slow running while we continue to maneuver into position. The sea is quite choppy, the swell, so it goes without saying one of the engineering officers is going to have to be on depth control. Um, officers overall not looking too bad, apart from Menzel. He's looking particularly tired. Um, so Menzel, um, we're going to have to order him to go get a cup of coffee. And with that, uh, hopefully, uh, he'll be... A little more awake and ready to join us in the action. There he goes. He's enjoyed his drink. Rudolf Menzel. Well, alarm bells are ringing. Everybody up. Periscope midships. And we can see, based on the smokestacks, either the wind or at the very least uh, the, the boats or both are heading slightly from our right um, over to our left which suits us fine we're seeing if we can get visual yeah there we go definitely with a trend over to the left which suits us great that means at this point we're going to swing left 90 degrees um, we'll keep an eye on this guy we seem to have the best picture on him and uh, we'll look to position ourselves into the middle of where the clump's going we'll dive down we'll use the hydrophone to assist and hopefully we'll get away with it. For now, we'll continue on slow speed. When they get closer, we'll uh, slow even more uh, to a creep. And at this point, uh, from red lighting, we're going to switch to blue. And that uh, is, uh, you know, rigging for ultra quiet. Also, dive planes uh, to manual. At this point, gyro compass has already been shut off. Uh, the snorkel's long gone. And with that, yeah, rig for ultra quiet. Swing left 90 degrees. I'll bring you back momentarily. Uh, let's go uh, 20 degrees to port. Bestätigt. So here we are. It's uh, coming up to 5.30 on the 22nd of Feb 41. Um, and yeah, these guys still out of a clear view on the periscope. However, hydrophone operator is able to pick them up. We've plotted them on to the chart, as you can see, and with a convoy heading roughly this direction. We can see numerous ships there, including, uh, most notably, we've got one warship here. Um, somebody that we won't, don't want to get too close to. Um, another one here. And so we'll see if we can nestle ourselves uh, just beyond this line here. And uh, we'll wait for the convoy to get a little closer. Based on that, I think we're going to maybe have to let this first guy through just because of his proximity uh, to the destroyers. I think we'll get more done if we start attacking the second one. And um, certainly looks like based on our hydrophone guy, he reckons this ship here uh, based off the propeller is somewhat larger than some of the others. Um, and so that may be a good first target to go for. We'll have to see what it is. And so, yeah, diving down now at uh, 5.30 on the morning. 
15 minutes later, we're lurking below the surface of the sea. Engines all stop. And if we take a look now on the map view, gives a little idea what we see there. Jumping over then into the hydrophone guy, let's have a quick listen. How you can make anything out from that, I have no idea. That is just a mass of propellers. Coming up to six o'clock. The destroyer has passed ahead of us. The other one's just in our blind spot. The first merchant ship is passing us by. And at this point, I think it's time uh, to begin surfacing uh, to periscope depth. It's allegedly is still night time. Our guy on damage control. Get him to very quickly maintain torpedo number five. That's the one at the back. Klaus on command station. And uh, Menzel once again is going to be operating the attack scope. Looks like he's starting to get visual. Here we go. Let's see what we can see. So scope amidships. So this was the guy. Oh, scope up a little bit. We got somebody on depth keeping. We do horse Weber. Looks like it's taken him a minute or so to stabilize the boat. Oh, very quiet indeed. Yeah, so that's the one that we have to let go due to its proximity to the destroyer. Maybe is a maybe there. That is a destroyer. That's a big black evil looking thing. That is quite a large boat. I'm certainly interested in that one. Yet another destroy. That's a large. These are quite close in proximity to us. There seem to be more. That's a large destroyer. I don't, I don't know. Is that even a cruiser? This is a large looking... There's a flower class that we were concerned about initially. No, we didn't recognize it as such, but... Okie doke, let's see then. Let's try this one first off. We're going to take a pop. It's the, uh, it's the Empire Bell style with the two vertical poles at the back. Empire Tower. I should think. The two poles are a tower making it the Empire Tower. Recognize. Velocity we know to be 13. We'll enter that. He's entering you know, parameters for shooting. So again, the, 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 the diagonal is there. With no 45 degrees angle of bow, we're beyond that. We're ways off the 90, um, but ways past it. I would say even 50. Uh, so if we were on that ship looking towards us, I reckon somewhere around 57 degrees. Uh, Something maybe even maybe even a little closer to 60. There we go. Distance then. Uh, let's try and get this as accurate as we can. Looks like the sun is not too far away from coming up. So best guess on the waterline is there. Up to the tallest mast about there. 1.7, so not too far. Tube 5, if this our guy finished the maintenance, he has. Well, Tube 5 it is. And if it misses, 1,850, double round to the right. Los. Los! Tube 5 in the drink. All right, unlock. 
And we're going to use what time we have left to see if we... Oh my, this guy's really close, but... Parameters are way off. What about this guy? Now this guy is the Empire style with the flat foot at the back, which is this one, the Empire Explorer. You need to explore with a flat foot. <laughs> flat lip. All right. Velocity 13. Of course, well, he's a little further along. I'm going to give him something like 68 degrees AOB. Just check we're looking in his midship. It's right around those uh, ones there. Distance. Well, his waterline is very low. And um, that's going to confuddle our targeting system a little bit. I'm going to give... I'm going to be a little generous. Copy that. Uh, 2.9. That's a little too far, surely. He just looks very heavily loaded. 2.3. I'm going to go with 2.3. Uh, 2 1. 2 2. Uh, two, one. Two, one. We'll split them. Let's go 60 degrees. Double back. Los. 20 Sekunden. 2, 1 and 2 out. And at this stage, lower the scope. So, oh, sounds like we've hit something fantastic. Silent reverse, rudder amidships, and here we hear the convoys ringing and dinging. Let's unlock this guy. My plan is to reverse and pick this guy up. Come on, surely we can get him. He's a tanker. Oh, he's got a weird sort of box structure at the back. He's right there. How many has he got? One. So he's got uh, tanker war class. No. 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 Do you know I can't ID him as a tanker? He's got the one central sort of structure. I'm going to have. Uh, it's this one. This is it. It is the war class. Velocity 13, course, AOB coming right up to the 90. Distance, well, it's not very far at all. Uh, I'm just going to go for 300 meters. Well, we've managed to sink one. Two, three, double back to the left at, uh, we're going to say, 500 meters if we miss. Los. Los! And with that, we'll unlock... And we've got, uh, we're getting pinged. That is a cruiser. I'm almost sure of it. Full stop. Quick look round, check we're not getting. Oh, very nice. Look at that. Screenshot. 20 seconds. And another large... I've never seen so many large naval ships guarding one convoy before. 10 seconds bis Einschlag. I guess they're counting um, on those long-range torpedoes. Der A ging daneben, Herr Kaloy that were fired at him, and it would seem like we missed, unfortunately. Hopefully one of them doubles back. I'm not sure if they've managed to identify where we are. Sure, we've got a destroyer there that's coming around. This guy here, but his searchlight's facing in the other way, so... I'm not sure. Well, you know what? Nah, uh, not really worth going for a destroyer. We don't really get much, but... Is this a destroyer? Is it? To me, this is a large Navy ship. Whatever it is, it's large. I'm going to go for it. Um, schneller, schneller. Silent forward. 
rudder full starboard. Coming inside, we need somebody to reload the tubes. Uh, Hoffman's on it. Great, he's got his assistance. There's uh, every. I think we've got everything as much as we can do here. And so, yeah, look how slow and silent. Let's have a little look on the map situation. Yeah, so this is the guy uh, we're seeing. It's the London. Huh. Um, so we're hoping that silent we can get around uh, like this and get a shot off. At least that's the plan. And then due to the excessive amount of pinging, I think... It may be prudent to try and make a run for it, just to get away. Better to live and uh, take this convoy on, um, perhaps tomorrow night. I've just had to increase my engines to slow to try and get this turn a little quicker. Here is that torpedo that missed, and it's just curved right off the bow of the Empire Gazelle. I think originally this was the torpedo uh, we shot at this ship. Uh, it's weaving, but I don't think it's going to have many more legs. Um, yeah. Things looking increasingly precarious. Uh, Hoffman maintaining now torpedo tube number two. The London ship here, velocity 13. Zooming out. Course... Um, let's have a look. We're slightly ahead, at least for now. Uh, maybe about 65 degrees. And the distance... Well, we're very close indeed. I realise we haven't ID'd it. Over to the cruisers. Um, three big chimneys to the back. And then this crane. Well, that's it. Recognise. Bingo. Distance. Ah, it's taking forever to split, so we're very, very close. There we go. 700 meters. Are we in firing parameters? Well, tube one, tube four. To the right, if they miss, that's fine. One last check. We're right on the 90 now. Loss. About 30 degrees off, that's fine. We can come to a full stop now. And the tubes are gone. And at this point, we've sunk three ships. Or at least uh, we sunk two. One of the messages was with regards to the convoy itself. 30 Sekunden. Why, that's a big boat. One of the Royal Navy's capital ships. 20 Sekunden. There we go. Perfect shot. Two torpedoes right into her side. One slightly ahead, one slightly behind MOT. The London is finished. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to dive down. I don't think there's much more we can do here. Um, for now, we're hiding within the baffles on the middle of the convoy. Um, you know what? I think maybe we'll do better... Mm, I don't know. Certainly we're not going to gain anything with a raised scope. Let's lower that. Wow, that was a very fast abandoned ship. Not 90 seconds ago, the captain and who knows what were on the officer's mess hall. Enjoying tea and crumpets. And now, not two minutes later, the entire ship's gone down very successful patrol let's see if we can get out of here but now my plan um is well <laughs> we're littered with destroyers that are looking for us this torpedo uh still doing the rounds yeah looks like we're going to carry on missing so we've got at least two destroyers here we've got another three here so five destroyers on our case uh three merchant ships left and um, potentially a friendly submarine over here um, that doesn't seem to be wanting to get stuck in, at least not now. Perhaps he was just tracking the convoy. 
Well, here we are inside the conning tower where we would look through the scope and we've given the order to dive down. Uh, so we're going to open the hatch and climb down into the main of the sub. Let's see if we can figure out how, how much room have we got beneath the ocean. Ping shallow. At least 125 meters. If we ping deep, I think they're going to hear us. And so for now, we take a look on map view. We've got some models overlaid. And once again, the torpedo doubling back on itself. Um, I wonder if the Empire Gazelle has any idea that she's been within about one ship's length of this torpedo for the last few minutes. That torpedo for sure is going to run out of legs before it does any damage at all. And so engines on silent running. We're going to see if we can get away from these guys. They're a little over... Uh, well, this guy here, what... Rough distance. Let's have a look. Let's uh, push out. He's about 1.4. I mean, the sonars, two things, right? They need to be pointed in our direction and then they have a maximum range. Now, I would like to get away on this trajectory, but it looks like this warship may pick us up if we do so. Um, I'm just making a right mess of our uh, map here so let's rub that out and um, let's rub some of these marks out as well um maybe the best plan for escape would be that way um through these uh two that at least for now are diverging watch this guy double back round and come right on top of us and either way i think this may be my best plan and again we are rigged for ultra quiet and that's what we're going to do and, in fact, to reduce our sound level even more, uh, as soon as uh, Hoffman finishes loading this torpedo, we're going to tell him to just go to damage repair party. Um, is uh, Loading torpedoes makes noise. Literally two minutes have passed, and that's what it looks like. We've just rolled out on our new heading. Um, the destroyers continued on their trajectory. There's one guy really close to us that seems to be uh, we, or rather, we seem to be in his baffles. I think best thing we can do now is double back round to the right. Um, we're 180 degrees away from the convoy's trend. Um, and if these guys can't find us despite the pinging earlier on, well, that's their loss, not ours. Back in first person view. Everybody looking nervous, everybody looking tense. Even the crew that are uh, completely, well, off duty, even though you shouldn't be off duty, though, should you? Didn't you hear the alarm bell ringing? Hi! Look at the wall. Look at me when I'm talking to you. The cook, yeah. And there's always one, there's always one that's sweeping. Don't you realise we're rigged for ultra quiet? Can't you find something better to do than sweep the engine room? I guess now. Very good. <laughs> so you run in front of me just to wind me up even more. I see, I see. That's how it is. Meanwhile, Schuster's busy listening out with his assistant. We can hear lots of boats over top. Thankfully, at least for now, no pings. And I don't believe it. About 15 minutes later, these destroyers continuing on their trend um, to search over in this area. No idea that we've slivered uh, underneath them. Ultra quiet and they didn't have a clue. I can't believe we got away with that. The nearest destroyer, potentially three kilometers away for... What we're going to do is uh, double, uh, make a rudder the hard left 90 degrees, and that's going to ensure that there's nobody right behind our engine, our, our baffles, if you like, because the U-boat has a blind spot 
roughly like that. You know, if we're traveling this way, I'll use a different part of the map. Let's assume we're traveling in the direction of that circle due north, uh, that line within the circle. Then our blind spot is going to be something like this. And so whatever's behind us, we can't hear. Even if, even if the engine's completely stopped. But uh, the more that we're moving, the worse that gets. And so by making a hard turn left, in theory, in theory, I'll tell you what, we'll clear out the middle line. And this sub still weighs ways over here. And it looks like the destroyers are resuming formation. This is a convoy. Uh, we've still got three merchant ships I think we should take on tomorrow. We've completed the 90 degree turn to the left. Propeller noises quiet and fading fast. With that panic over, periscope depth. Switch to red lighting. Dive planes electric. Keep the gyre off for now. Uh, Hoffman can perform his maintenance on torpedo tubes. And I think we can reduce the amount of assistance on the officers. And uh, we'll let go of the alarm. If we can, we can't. Seems to be an automatic thing. I'm sure you were able to control it at one point. Ah, there we go. You control it that way. Fair enough. Which is kind of weird because you grab radio messages and so forth from over here. Bit of a mixed bag. Arriving at periscope depth. We stick the scope up. And what do you know? Distant smoke stacks traversing away. Very, very successful raid. I can't believe how easy we got away with it. We can see the sun beginning to rise. See nice and calm. The second U-boat, or rather a third U-boat, has arrived on scene. So ourselves, the one that we saw earlier, then another one. Yeah. Golden hour has begun not long until sunrise. And I think that is going to end our first episode. I hope you join me again. Where we'll uh, continue the mission and hopefully pick up the convoy tomorrow evening. Until then, take care wherever in the world you are. From me, somewhere in the northeast Atlantic, 22nd of February, 1941, 7am. Goodbye. <laughs>